Hey y'all, it's Rio from Team Wolfpack, bringing you the first installation of Meta Review. This is a new weekly show that we're going to be doing, basically giving you a meta analysis and talking about the decks we've been seeing in tournaments. This first week we'll be talking about the first July Evo Cup, happened at Top Cut this July 10th. For that, so a few announcements. Welcome! This is our new channel, thank you for finding us. We'll be uploading weekly content here, me, myself, and... A lot of my team members are preparing some, some nice content uh, with deck lists, meta analysis, gameplay. So if anything that interests you, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and leave a like. Uh, additionally, our team is recruiting, so if that interests you at all, we'll have all the information about that in the doobly-doo. So just reach out to us. We have a Discord server. Yeah, that sounds all about right, so let's get back to the video. So, this weekend we had the Top Cut event with our team captain, uh, Wolf, Sean uh, Nelson, getting first place. Uh, all the information about Top 16 has been provided by the tournament organizer in this little lovely Excel sheet. Uh, this just dropped, so this isn't fully updated. The fully updated Excel sheet will be linked down in the doobly-doo as well. So if you want to look at that, just go down there, check it out. But the breakdown is, as you see in front of you now, uh, we had an outstanding performance with Yellow War Grey. Uh, two variants of Yellow War Grey. The usual Yellow War Grey we see with the Slashes and the Magnetromons, showing at our usual 30 to 40 percent. But an additional 25 percent of top cut was this War Masty variant, which is the Yellow War Grey with the little few changes in the core. But in the top end, you're playing Mastimon instead of your Slashes, um, or instead of your Magnadramons, which is really interesting, um, especially this explosive number coming out of nowhere. The other interesting things for this, this breakdown is we see three Rookie Rush players. We see two Rookie Rush, the green-blue variant that we're all very aware of, and hybrid rush deck, which is using the hybrid package to cheat out your ancient Gurumon for extra burst damage. Um, so this is very different. Uh, we haven't seen rookie rush in these numbers since the 1.5 meta, so that that's very interesting. I don't know if I welcome it, but um, interesting nevertheless. Uh, other things that I you can really notice is there's no green on this list. Not a single green list made top 16. Um, is this a meta change? I don't know. I was talking to a few top players about it. Uh, essentially, they didn't really see green control. They never faced it. Uh, a few of them mentioned that they faced OTK variants, but they never saw Hercules the whole, the whole tournament. Um, so maybe green players just flunked out? first few rounds, uh, maybe green isn't as good in this meta, maybe there's not that many green players. Uh, you can't really tell. Um, but with this lack of green showing, yellow has bounced back to being absolutely the best deck in this format. Uh, if you look, if you consider red, yellow, control a yellow deck, which they pretty much play all yellow cards in Gaia Force, we have an outstanding 75% of the meta being of the top cut being yellow, uh, which 65% of that being war gray alone, basically. Um, so that is very interesting from the previous weeks where we were seeing consistently 30, 40, 45 at best in the early meta. So that's an, a very interesting change. Another thing that's really interesting is we got black OTK uh, rearing its head. Pops up every now and then. It's a deck people don't expect, and it can do a lot of good things. Um, and yeah, that that's the breakdown. Um, I will be talking about each deck and showing a few of their lists and interesting things I see in lists and changes that we see from previous weeks. Uh, if you want to look at a specific deck, I will have all the decks timestamped um, on this video, so just click ahead. Um, but yeah, first off, we'll talk about Yellow War Grey. Yellow War Grey, astounding performance all throughout the meta, um, and as we're going to see with this first list, more aggressive lists are being rewarded. Um, the first list we have I'm talking about is the second place 
list from David Zhang. Uh, David, first thing I noticed right away, for Upa months, you want to, he wants to be drawing. Drawing will get you to your pieces and will let you finish the game very quickly. Uh, we see the usual four Pulsemon, uh, three to four Bushi, we see three Bushi. Um, Patamons are seeing some play in certain decks. Uh, especially if green's not in the meta, you're not too worried about being shut down by something like a Terrier Mon or a Gauzy Mon. Um, pretty standard up to there, we see the four Angelmen establishing that, hey, I want to go aggressive, I want to spam rookies. I want to loop those pulse mons like no other card in the world. Um, yeah, and we see War Growlmon, Angelman Recovery, which I've been seeing in more lists. And the one thing that startles me, which uh, we're, we're, what I think is is the hallmark of an aggressive deck, despite the tournament organizers saying this is a toolbox deck, is the Magnadramons. Magnadramon is one of those level sixes that really don't care about losing as much as Wargrey. Because you swing with Wargrey and it dies in security, you feel really bad about it because you wasted that security to, you know, restand it. But Magnetramon doesn't have that problem. Magnetramon, you can swing it, let it die. It's got all that value from the swing already. It's gotten, it's a, when attacking proc and what inheritables it has. It's done its work. Um, and I see a lot of players who want to play more of the aggressive go for this Magnetramon. Um, we're going to see if the first place lists when we talk about War, War Masty, they're also playing those back to Dramons to be extra aggressive. Um, yeah, so it's pretty solid. And then we have three Chaos Mon, two Eden, two Bl Blinding Ray, three TK, very standard ratios. Uh, TK at three is, you know, the most we see of TK. Uh, a lot of lists are starting to run two, which I'll talk about a little bit more with the other War Grey lists I want to look at. Uh, the next War Grey list I want to talk about is the 11th place Mill War Grey list from Ryan Bordoff. Um, this is what is considered the more DP reduction list. Uh, it's still running a lot of aggressive cards like Angel Woman. It's running three Upas. Um, interesting thing is running three Pulsemon, which I think is a budget option. It's running the DP reduction Gatamons, which is a card that we haven't been seeing a lot recently. Um, but the real interesting thing about this list, um, is if you look at the level 6 lineup, you notice there's a Clavis. Clavis Angelmon was a interesting tech that we saw in red-yellow in the 1.5 meta. And it actually has its home here, oddly enough, um, as being something that can delete stuff when it swings. It's another one of those level 6s that you can get value off, and it doesn't feel as bad as War Grey to, you know, sort of misfire into the security. Um, it's also a card that people just don't know how to play around. They haven't seen a Clavis in months. They aren't expecting it. Uh, and I've talked to a little bit this player, and they're like, yeah, most people, I put down the Clavis, and they're like, I don't know what to do. And they misplay right into it. Um, so that seems to be a big thing um, with, you know, sort of these new decks appearing and people don't know how to play with them. They're like so ready for this like standard war gray list. And then they get these little things that make and break the individual games and can help you place in these top 16 spots. Uh, we've seen four war gray, which is a little unusual. Two chaos Valdermon. I know some people are talking the Valder arms a little bit to make more space, to be a little bit more consistent. We see free binding rays to be a little bit more explosive. And the other thing I've noticed is we've got the Karis. Um, Karis is a card in this deck that I've wanted for a while, but I've never seen a good list that uses them. Um, I don't know how it felt for this player, but we'll see in some other lists that Kari are seeing some experimentation and could be doing good, could be doing bad. I have personally not tried it, but it is interesting. I, I like the idea. Um, and as we go down the top 16 list, we have uh, 10th place is Benjamin Lee. Um, again, this is another mixed sort of, uh, we're seeing DP reduction, but we're seeing aggression with the Upamons, letting you draw your pieces for Angelman. But we're seeing more Slash. Uh, we see the Salamons. Uh, there's a bigger recovery package with a lot of people opting out to play the Patamons now. 
But yeah, this is what I would call a true toolbox list. Um, and really solid finish. Um, I, I I have a lot of friends who know Benjamin, solid guy, good player. But yeah, overall good lists. And the last thing I want to talk about Yellow War Grey is Michael's list, 14th place Yellow War Grey. Uh, and this is what I would consider the true DP reduction control list. It's what we were seeing in the very early meta and what we expected War Grey to look like. Um, and this list is really solid. It's not the aggression that we've been seeing in the top eight um, that I'm, you know, declaring the rise of aggression. But it has a really solid matchup against anything that's not War Grey. Because you can just wipe the field and, you know, do War Grey things. <laughs> playing the Koromon on the Salomon, uh, playing four Bishis for the aggression, still playing a small recovery package with the two Pata, the one Lucy. Playing very aggressive the angel ones, but still having the four war grays and three slashes for a ridiculous amount of DP reduction in the top end. Um, and then just the blinding ray on the top end for more explosive plays when you need that memory. Um, overall solid list, uh, I want to say congratulations to all the war gray players playing at the event. It, it it's I, I it's a very strong deck, but it also takes very good pilots to do it and bring it all the way up through all those mirror matches. Uh, and then the list I really want to talk about is the War Mastimon, because you take this concept of aggression and take it one step version fur further while playing around red-yellow with Mastimon. Um, so the first list I want to talk about is my team captain's list, uh, Sean Nelson, otherwise known as Wolf, uh, piloted to first place. Uh, again, we're seeing a lot of the hallmarks of the more aggressive cards that we're seeing the other War Grey lists that we're topping. You got the four Upa, four Bishi, four Angel Woman, uh, still, you know, decent recovery package with four Salomon, two Pata, two Lucy. Uh, but interesting that makes this a War Grey Mastimon list, a War Masty list, one would say, uh, is you have the addition of the Gatamons and the Mastimons. Uh, the Gatamons add recovery while having it be a blocker as well. So it's one of your revived targets that does a heal and a block. So it's like a heal two almost. Um, we've got the Magna Dramon, which again, we saw on some of the more aggressive lists previously, letting you have these level sixes that you really don't care about and can get you the same rookie spam value as Wargrave without the cost of your security. Uh, other interesting thing I want to talk about this list is the reduction of TK to 2 and Blinding Ray to 2. There's a mentality in the Digimon community that some groups have that Digimon win Digimon. And that's true. That's true. Uh, and this list is just shows that. Digimon win Digimon. And I was talking to Wolf a lot. And a lot of games, you just don't need TK. Because you and your opponent agree, hello, this is an aggression matchup. Whoever out aggros, or if you out control my aggro, that will choose who wins this game. I don't need TK. I want to spend every memory into winning this game. I don't need TK to spend that extra, you know, four memory that's just going to do nothing to, towards me winning the game. Yes, it helps you set up combos. Combo decks love it. But if you're playing an aggressive deck, if you have established, I am playing aggro, I think we're going to see an increase forward of TK going to two. You don't need it until you and your opponent have agreed this is no longer an aggro game. Whoever spends their memory and most efficiently to defeat your opponent. Uh, I could talk about this list forever. I also helped build it, so I have my strong opinions. But I'm going to look at a little bit of the other War Massey list. Because Wolf was not the only one who had the idea of mixing more Grey and Mastimon. So let's look at the 7th place War Masti list, uh, Zuhar Zadiz list. <laughs> um, we've got a little bit of a different take here. Uh, there's a lot more DP reduction. We see the four Patamons that gain memory when you uh, reduce something. We've got the Gatamon reducers. We've got four Koromons. Um, but we still have the Angel Ones. We have the Rookie Spam. We have an astounding four War Greys. Um, which is a lot more than a lot of lists play with usual being three. Uh, and then we got the one rise gray. Um, with these war, gray, uh, war masculists, we're seeing a lot of experimentation. 
as this is a very early on and, and list isn't you know super concrete and rise is one of those cards that people are considering um because it lets you get the, the tk and change the game from being oh this is you know a little bit more aggressive and playing the value game with Mastymon instead i will outvalue you and that will determine the game um very solid way of playing so having access to aggression in certain hands really solid especially with uh this person opted to play for blinding rays which lets you just have so much value into your plays where you can do all this dp reduction and just spend all that memory of blinding ray to finish the game um yeah pretty solid list um i do want to talk about the other war Masty list uh because it takes that idea to another extreme where you're playing this is more of a mastymon core with war gray in it and it's taking also that rise to the extreme where not only tk is a target for rise but also the two karis which the two karis allow you to basically get to your mastymon about passing turn because kari yellow will get you to four memory at the beginning of the turn with tk and Kari Purple will reduce the cost, essentially, of Mastymon by one. Because Mastymon will trash your security, you tap Kari, you gain a memory. Um, list is solid, it's another take. It's using the four Koromons. It is establishing an early game dominance and control, but with the three blinding rays and the top end that can just rookie spam, even though they've less committed to it with only playing three Angel Woman, can do a lot of damage. Um, and this is Dustin Manley's list. Uh, also, you've got the level 7 there, which we were used to seeing Valder Arm, but uh, I talked to Wolf a little bit about this. A lot of people are expecting Millennial Mon on top of a, a, a Masty Mon, and it gets into this game in tournaments where, okay, I don't know what my opponent's really playing. They're playing this weird thing that I haven't seen a list for. They're playing Clavis, they're playing Masty Mon. I don't know what you're going to do. What are you putting on Clavis? What is Clavis getting to? What are the combos? What is the level 7 you're going to digivolve that's going to punish me? Um, and this surprise factor in these lists, this sort of unknown, I think helps a lot of players who are playing these, you know, odd techs and stuff. Um, I'd have to see how that, you know, interacts with the meta moving on, especially as we're looking more deeply into lists rather than overviews of what decks are topping. But I, I think that's a very important and interesting thing to look at. Um, next, we have Rookie Rush, which is a very surprising list that we're seeing more of nowadays. Um, the top four list with Bear, it's very standard Rookie Rush. We've got your standard blue uh, with three Gabu, four Strabi, four V, four Lekmon, and the three Gamamons. Solid blue base. You can very quickly swarm the board for very cheap and choke your opponent. We've got the two drop green 5k bodies, um, very standard four lineup with three of each really good level fours that pair up with Rookie Rush. You've got the XV, the pairs of the Vmon to basically do, do damage on a Digimon. You've got the Lobomon, which can go on Davis for an extra burst. And we got the Gorilla Mon, which is, plays around uh, Shakuman and also lets you beat over blockers a little easier. Um, then we have Puppet Mon at three. Still a solid Rookie Rush card. Uh, I don't think we'll see Puppet Mon going anywhere, even though you're sending a lot of memory to use Puppet Mon. But it just, it's a solid card that lets you lock down your opponent for a few turns, just to keep you going um, where you need to get going with Rookie Rush. Uh, option lineup, we see the very standard Hammer Spark, Needle Spray, Position Tron. And we see the rise of this Aqua Viper, um, which is bounce one Digimon and return two level four lowers from your opponent's field to their hand. This is an interesting card. Um, it has some interesting synergy with some of the on-play Digimon. You can do it on Stravimon to get Stravimon back to your hand and play Stravimon again to go hunting for your Davises. You can play it on Puppetmon to re-puppet and puppet endlessly. There are some interesting plays you can do with it. Um, don't know how I feel about it, but it supposedly works and we see this to its extreme in the next list, the sixth place list by Ari, 
uh, where they're playing what they've told me is Turbo Rookie Rush. And the reason I call it Turbo Rookie Rush is they just cut the Gorilla Mons and they're maximizing the rookies as much as they can. They're trying to swarm the board. But they also play some interesting decks. They play Chimera Mon, which we haven't seen since the BT1 format in Rookie Rush, uh, which is really interesting with the raising uh, meta that we're having where people aren't raising their level 5s until they have combo. But if you're playing Rookie Rush, what's the harm? What's the harm of having the Angel Woman out? What's the harm of having that Cherry Mon out? It's basically invincible in this Rookie Rush, right? This is the mentality a player playing against Ari would have, and Chimera Mon is an excellent way to punish that. And I do really appreciate that in the list. Um, and even though Ari's only running two of them, they're recyclable with the four copies of Aqua Viper he's playing. So this list, I think, was a really strong meta call, especially in this more aggressive meta, where people are just going to be pushing out these level 5s to get into those level 3s and try to out-aggro Rookie Rush. Overall, solid list. Um, Rookie Rush is making a comeback. There's one more list that I sadly cannot show. It's Hybrid Rookie Rush. I couldn't get the list in time for this video, uh, and the information is not all up on the Excel sheet yet. Um, but hopefully I can make a video and talk about it some other time, so just, you're gonna have to like and subscribe, uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Uh, but after Rookie Rush, I want to talk about Black OTK a little bit. Uh, Black OTK is a deck that's a little close to my heart. Um, I think it has a lot of potential, it comes up every now and then, people don't really know what it does. Um, but we have the top 5 finish Black OTK by Leaky. Uh, if you want to check out their full video, they have a video on Limit Break. I highly suggest watching it, because they'll have a better analysis than I could possibly have. Uh, just a few interesting things I want to mention on, you know, someone playing against Black OTK. Uh, Chumon is in this list, which we haven't seen in Blacklist before. Blacklist overall have been very inconsistent, not a solid list, been, you know, uh, formed yet. But the Chumons, especially what we're seeing the other topping lists, probably put in a lot of work. So we're seeing people playing Blinding Rays at 3 and 4, playing Patamons still. And, you know, when there isn't green, green is who's going to punish it? And that's where Chumon comes in as an unexpected surprise that punishes and keeps those Blinding Rays in hand. Same thing with Hammer Spark. With those Rookie Rush players playing 4 copies of Hammer Spark, Hammer Spark were so dead. So dead in hand. So I think that's really solid, solid at 3, love 3 as a ratio. Uh, other things that I noticed was interesting was Greymon was actually included to get jamming. Um, I think with Zoo rearing its head every now and then, it's not a bad tech. I don't know how often it came up, especially because it has to be on a good stack like Toy Um But solid card, interesting. It's a non, you know, rapid way to get into, well, it's a four hard play, that's solid, it comes up, um, probably. <laughs> Level 5 lineup is basically what you see in a lot of lists, it's Gogamon for that digi burst, get all that DP up, it dodges, helps you dodge Nidhogg, helps you get into your Zuba punch, a Magnetron to get your big guys blockers, doesn't really matter that much on a war grade level, because you can DP reduce them, but solid card, it helps you get these you know, states where your opponent can't do much damage. Um, level 6 lineup is your usual Blast Mon and Black War Grey. Interesting thing is a Blitz Grey Mon. I really like the card, and especially if people are playing more aggressively, Blitz Grey Mon is a great way to punish that with the piercing, and it's also a great target for Zuba Punch with that 12k body. Um, level 7s, it's a split. I don't know how relevant the split is. I would check out Limit Break's video, they talked a little bit about that. It does help a lot with more of the surprise factor, um, because if you've got that, you can play one level 7 in one game, that you're preparing for that, you know, Chaos Mon that they saw in game 1, and then you ult arrest them. So, it could come up. It's an interesting theory. Overall, interesting list. I excited to see more Black OTK. Uh, last deck I want to talk about is Red Yellow Control. Very lucky that I ended up getting uh, KVN's list, 13th place Red Yellow Control by KVN. Um, 
Again, very standard uh, red, yellow control list playing all your removal options. Uh, interesting things I'm noting, uh, Ankleomons are coming back to this list, um, and the reason I think that's coming back to the list is because of the Angel Woman that is being played instead of the Magnet Angelmon. You want to be able to Digivolve into your level 5s, into your 6s, into your 7s very efficiently, uh, and Ankleomon is a way to do that. Um, and then you can Digivolve into your 1 Angel Woman, Security minus 2 something, Digivolve into a Magnadramon, either the 3 or the 2, spam up some rookies, especially now that they're playing Bishi, which I haven't seen in the list before. Uh, Lucimons are at 3, so there's a lot of good targets for both Angel Woman and Magnadramon's effect to basically cheat rookies out. Uh, it also lets you get into your Velder Arm a lot easier, so that's an interesting change to the list. Uh, the other red-yellow control, I believe, is a very similar list, because I know KVN and S'mores, which is the other player, do communicate often on that. So I would not imag I'd imagine it's pretty much the same thing, minus one or two cards. Um, solid, we're probably going to see more of this, especially with the meta of this tournament being very aggressive. If that continues, red-yellow will be rewarded for that, so they can handle very much the aggression. The Rookie Rush matchup is pretty good. The uh, yellow war gray match is really good for them. So if we're seeing this big turns out both rookie rush and yellow war gray, I wouldn't be surprised anymore. Red yellow. Um, overall, yeah. Um, if you're scared of red yellow, I recommend you play green. Green has a good matchup against this deck. Uh, you can control the field if they try to use their mega zoo package. Um, and you can go pretty wide and dodge their removal pretty easily, especially with a lot of uh, green Digimon being higher DP. They can easily dodge Seven Heavens, easily dodge Eden's Javelin. Um, Did Hog being 13 is usually very relevant. So we'll see. Hopefully, a growth of green will get rid of a lot of these very aggressive decks and decks that can farm aggressive decks and sort of increase the variety in the meta. Um, but that's overall my closing thoughts. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, uh, and I'll see you next week uh, with another video. If you have any thoughts, leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, a ciao.